Now let's get right to me Schneider, Director, Trading Education and Research, MarketCage.com, to talk about several things, including those meme stocks. I know you watch some of this action. Um, you could tell us your big picture. In fact, Facebook, the metaverse, is on your radar, too. Uh, what are you thinking here, Mish? Well, we can't deny the fact that the market has defied everything possible that could put it down, and yet it continues to rock on. So assuming that we don't see any major cracks, like, for example, that the long bonds continue actually to surprise everyone, instead of yields rising, they actually go down in terms of the long bonds, not the short-term bonds. And we, we don't see the SPY start to underperform or the IWM can't get any higher or the transportation starts to collapse. Assuming everything is kind of okay and we just go through some dust settle, it seems to me that there's a tremendous amount of opportunity here in these earnings seasons. And we talked about meme stocks. AMC actually reports next week. So that would be one to really focus on, particularly as we can come up with some fundamentals. But yeah, the market's been amazing. And especially if you are a momentum trader or what they call a pump and dump trader, like we see so often in the meme stocks like Bed Bath & Beyond, for example, which rocketed the other day, or GameStop, which rocketed and has come off. So, yeah, I, I think uh, the, the Fed yesterday really helped because what they said, it was interpreted as extremely dovish. Hmm. Okay. And then uh, could you focus your attention on Roblox, a fairly new company, right? One of the newer ones for the young folks that are creating all kinds of games. Roblox, a winner for you? Well, we're already in it, so I like to disclose that. And it actually also reports on Monday. So that would be something to look for probably post-earnings. It is a video gaming company, and they too are talking about going metaverse down the road. So if you don't want to trade Facebook for any particular reason, bad publicity, or you're just worried about that stock in general, I think they would still be the premier place to go for a metaverse type play. But we really like the Roblox stock right here. And it sort of has a wide range between 75 and 90. If we report really well and take out 90, then I think this is going to fly. And if it reports sort of meager and holds 75, I still think it's a good buy opportunity. Mm, I see. OK. Um, I know Visa is still on your list as well. You had silver for commodities. Um, tell me a little bit about that play. Not gold, silver. Silver, yes. Well, one of the things that even though inflation today in terms of the different sectors that measure inflation like the metals and food and commodities have come off, what has been interesting is that silver has actually started to outperform the gold. And that relationship has come in a little bit. But still, in an overall environment, us all-time commodities traders know that when silver starts to outperform the gold, that is inflationary indicator. And so I like silver here. It's been basing a lot. Uh, if it holds, I think your max risk is about 2080 in the SLV ETF. And if it can take out 23, I think you're going to start to see a big surprise as we get into the end of the year and into 2022 with the silver market. Interesting. And then I'll turn your attention to food. I know you had Cheesecake Factory on your radar as a potential uh, portfolio pick there, as well as Kura Sushi, one that we don't follow as closely, K-R-U-S. Tell me about these two names. Are you a buyer of both of these names? Not yet. Kura Sushi, by the way, doesn't report until November 11th, so that has a little bit of time for us to watch. Cake has reported. It reported well, but we want to see it... Uh, get over the 50-day moving average. It's still trading under, and even though it has popped after the report, there's a little bit of a line in the sand there that we want to see clear. And once that does, I would definitely go, and I think 40 should be pretty good support in that uh, place. I like Cheesecake Factory. I think it has a great menu. And as people are popping back out again, and as we get closer to the holidays and people start going out more, I think that Cheesecake could actually really benefit. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I couldn't believe the Russell's move yesterday. I think it was yesterday that I had to rub my eyes and say, wow, look at those small caps, you know, after the Fed. And we just saw the Russell really jumping. And I know you had Zebra, uh, a growth. Tell me a little bit about either a small cap thought or that name in particular. 
Well, it's a small cap growth stock, and it sort of was in the same camp for me in a, a, over a year ago as HubSpot, which is now trading over $800 a share. And Zebra right now is trading uh, at right, Google, well, just cleared 300. It cleared over 295 after it reported, and it's over 300. I think that that's another company. It's another sort of small cap growth stock in the tech space that has a lot of great potential. And it's not one that would be affected let's say by inflationary factors because they don't necessarily have to take their cost if their costs rise and pass it on to a consumer and that's been really the advantage of a lot of these small cap growth fintech stocks is that unlike Apple that has to raise the cost of a, of a product to the consumer these companies do not so I really like Zebra here it's already rocketing but it may not be too late mm. All right, Lee Schneider, Market Gauge, thank you very much, marketgauge.com. It's wonderful to see you, Mish. Thanks for those names, too. We appreciate it. Thank you, Nicole. Coming